Hey guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. Going to show you a quick diving video from this past week. Me and a buddy decided that we wanted to go do some deep diving down in our local quarry. So we loaded up our gear, we headed down there, and we made us a dive plan. Now our original plan was to go spend about 20 to 30 minutes at the bottom, uh, which is around 95, 96 feet, give or take, if we've had a lot of rain or not. Um, and then we was going to come up to what we call the playground area between 30 to 40 feet and spend about another 30 minutes or so. So we loaded up our gear, we headed down there, and we proceeded to do our dive. However, once we reached the bottom, I turned to check on my buddy and noticed that he wasn't there. I pretty much outswam my buddy or lost my buddy. Uh, so I performed just a proper uh, buddy loss procedure. And it goes all the way back to your open water class on how you're going to perform this particular skill. Now, we understand that anytime you lose your buddy, you want to search for a minute slowly make or make a slow safe ascent to the surface and then your buddy should be at the surface once he realized that he had lost you as well well when you deal with deep diving and we were like i said 95 to 96 feet deep or i was i couldn't just look for my buddy and come straight up to the surface because i had other obligations you may have deco stops or deep stops or most importantly even safety stops that you're going to have to perform so what i'm going to show you is a real-time footage and i'll go ahead and tell you up front i've edited just a small few little clips out of this video uh, just to try to keep it you know a, a short enough video so you don't get too bored with it but I, i've tried to keep as much of what actually happened in there so that you can get a good idea of just how long it takes to do this procedure at such a deep depth um, and if you ever lose your buddy underwater don't panic remember to breathe remember to stop think and act stop everything you're doing think about what the problem is how to fix that problem and then act upon it so take a real quick look at this video i'll come and take through it showing you what i'm doing and then i'll give you some final thoughts at the end all right guys, so here we are at the very beginning of the dive. We just finished up our pre-dive safety check with each other and we're headed down. Uh, the dive site that we're at, this is the PDRA or otherwise known as the Piedmont Dive and Rescue Association. This is the Lake Norman Quarry. Um, and we had all intentions of going down to the bottom. It's about 95, 96 feet down to the bottom. Uh, to look at a big cruiser boat, uh, was gonna work our way over to say a 70 foot mark and then slowly come up a wall. Um, and then finish our dive in 30 to 40 feet and try to make a good hour long dive out of this. Uh, the gentleman that's diving with me, we dive together quite a bit. If you see some of our treasure hunt videos, this is the gentleman that's usually recording for me, uh, both the intro and outro parts to the video. So uh, he, he's a very experienced diver. He's been diving for a while now. And um, this was his first time going to the bottom of this particular quarry. So we took a couple extra precautions. I have a personal rule. Anytime that I'm doing, say, a deep dive below 60 feet or anytime I'm in a night dive situation or, you know, we do a lot of ice diving in the wintertime, anytime we got an overhead environment. And since we are big in public safety, anytime that we're on a public safety dive, we always take redundant air with us. And you can see I'm slinging there on my left-hand side just a standard 80 cubic foot um, aluminum cylinder. And that's just a redundant air source for me or for my buddy. Uh, just in the event that something was to happen, we, we would have a redundant air source. And on this particular dive, being this was his first time going down, typically speaking, I'd probably just have a 30 cubic foot pony cylinder with me. But being that this was his first time going to... Um, this particular side or this depth here in the quarry I chose to go with an 80 just to give us a little bit extra uh, air just in the event of an emergency he would have air and I would have air as well um, but we're headed down the line here and you, you could probably already see a couple times I've turned to check on him make sure he's okay and you know we do that on regular intervals you know I'm gonna say maybe every 30 seconds to a minute maybe up to two or three minute intervals we'll just turn to each other check make sure everything's okay um, here shortly I will turn to check on him and he will say that he's okay but then he'll tell me that he's having a little trouble with his ears uh, due to temperature uh, change like I said we're going through several thermoclines here so I tell him just to slow his uh, ascent or his descent rate just a little bit to help him equalize out um, and before I know any different he he's gone and you'll see it in the video and I didn't know it until I hit the bottom of the quarry here uh, just how quickly after I checked on him last time that he actually we we become separated so 
as we're going down here, I'll signal once again, are you okay? He signals, okay. I'm telling him, okay, just slow your ascent down just a little bit. Uh, I turn back to continue on, and we're following the line down to the bottom of the quarry. And then here you can see he's kind of headed back to the surface a little bit, and he's slowing down. Um, you know, partly my fault. I, sh I should have stopped with him and, and checked on him, um, but I assumed that he was just going to slow his descent a little bit. I, I didn't actually think he was going to head on to the surface. And then, of course, I turn. I look. I notice that he is above me. I'm going to signal, hey, are you okay? He signals, yes, I'm okay, and he starts on back down the line. So I just said, well, I'm going to stop here for a second, wait on him to meet back up, and I'm, I'm taking a guess here. I think I looked at my computer there. We're probably about 75, 80 feet deep, so we had about 10 more feet to go uh, to, to hit our target, what we were going for. Uh, so I descend on down, assuming he's coming right behind me. Uh, of course, here you can see just how dark it is at the bottom of this quarry. Now, we do have good visibility here, uh, typically speaking. Um, the reason you're not seeing much now is I've got the light shining out in front of the camera that you're, you're seeing, and the camera that you're seeing is actually focused on me. Um, so I do have a camera on my forehead, which you're not seeing the footage from it. You'll see some footage from it here towards the end of the video, but you're only seeing the footage from the camera that I have on the, the camera pole that I got. So there's there's not much light shining on me. Uh, there, all the lights uh, projected out in front of the camera, so that's why it's pretty dark there. But here I've really noticed that I'm alone, that my buddy's not with me, and so I'm going to immediately start my buddy search procedure. So basically all I'm doing is I've reached my depth, I've started swimming kind of in a, a circle, looking up above me, looking out in front of me, looking around, and I'm going to do that for approximately a minute, uh, and then I'm going to start my ascent. Now, during my ascent, there's several things i got to take in consideration. Now, first of all, I'm at 96 feet, so, you know, my ascent rate's a foot every two seconds, so at the maximum, or, or you know, at the, the fastest I should have... Uh, go up would be 180 some or 192 seconds from that depth of course it's going to be slower because on this particular dive i did actually two stops on my way up i did a deep stop around the 65 70 foot mark and then also i did my safety stop my three minute safety stop at 30 feet and that's once again something that a lot of times i think divers forget about they get into the mode of oh no i've lost my buddy i gotta find him i gotta make it to the surface so i can find him and sometimes we neglect just our basic open water skills in basic open water we're taught to always do a safety stop you know if your computer, if you're diving with a computer instead of tables, and your computer tells you to do a safety stop, then you do a safety stop. Don't don't jeopardize or risk it unless you have the uh, unfortunate event where you you are going to run out of air and you have to make that direct ascent. But I had plenty of air with me. I'm still searching for my buddy. I didn't panic. And anytime we have that problem, you want to stop, think, and act. Stop everything you're doing. Think about what the problem is, how to fix it, and then act accordingly. And that's what I'm doing. I'm stopping everything I'm doing. I'm doing my uh, deep stop now around the 70 foot mark, um, thinking about, okay, I've looked for my buddy, I've shined my light, I've looked for reflections of the bubbles, I'm unable to find him, so I'm going to continue my ascent. Now, during my ascent, I simply just reversed the course that I took to get to that depth. I followed the line back up the wall of the quarry, um, constantly looking around, looking for my buddy. Now, this whole time, I'm having the assumption that he made it to the surface and that he is following in my bubbles around on the surface so when I get to my safety stop depth and I decide to do a three minute stop I made the decision instead of continually swimming around looking for him at that particular depth that I would just stay in one spot for a three minute safety stop and allow him to swim across the surface, find my bubbles, and then descend down to check on me. So this was something that I usually uh, discuss prior to any dive with, with a new buddy or even somebody that I dive with on a regular basis. We usually already have our plans in mind. We're going to look for a minute, make our ascent. During our ascent, if we're to perform a safety stop, we've most of the guys I dive with, we've agreed that during your safety stop, stay in place, don't move. If you have to, shoot a buoy, that way they can find you. Now, we happen to be the only two divers in this quarry uh, this particular day, so there was no chance of him swimming across another diver. Uh, so I didn't bother shooting a buoy. Um, and 
right now I'm I'm getting to my safety stop depth. I'm still looking for him, but I'm trying to stay in or I'm trying to stay in one one particular spot. Um, and the visibility was good enough I could actually see if he was up above me. So I'm just sitting there waiting on him to swim. Now during my safety stop, I'll look up one last time and I will notice him uh, kind of swimming over to me because, like I said, the visibility was pretty good for me. And here's where I'm coming up for my safety stop, but uh, I do notice him swimming over to me, and you know he basically gets right on top of my bubbles. He'll signal down with his flashlight, let me know or ask me if I'm okay, and of course I signal back to him. I complete my safety stop, and then I head on back up to the surface, and then uh, we reconvene and then continue our dive from there. But the purpose of this video, once again, was to show you that, you know, sometimes what we teach students, you, you search for a minute and come to the surface, you can't quite always do that. It's not quite as simple as it seems. There's usually more steps to making uh, a buddy loss procedure check or, or a search for a lost buddy. You know, you have other obligations. You may have a deco stop or a deep stop or even a safety stop that you're going to have to perform. Uh, now, it, Let's say that I was in a current. If I was in a current during those stops, then yes, by all means, I would have shot a buoy to the surface. That way he could have found the buoy, swam over to it, and he could actually follow the line down to me if I just shot a buoy. But there's absolutely no current here. So, and we had pre-discussed, you know, as I, as I do with all my dive buddies, what to do if we become separated. And we simply followed our procedure. We, you know, we planned our dive and we simply dived our plan. It, it was just short and as sweet as that uh, we both came out of this perfectly okay uh, n neither one of us was shooken up you know we're both experienced divers so we were perfectly okay being alone for the brief time that we were alone uh, I, I felt very comfortable at that depth even with limited vis at the bottom to where you, you could see how dark it was. I did have a redundant air source. I knew my equipment. And guys, I've been diving for 28 years. I just crossed over the 5,000 dive mark. So, um, you know, I did feel very, very comfortable alone. He also felt comfortable. We both understood our procedures that we should follow in the event that we lost each other. And that's what we did. We followed the procedures and then we found each other back at the surface. So, I really appreciate you watching this video, guys. I, I hope you understand that not everything is so black and white. And the training that you get from your instructors, wherever you take your dive training, uh, you know, a lot of times we follow it by the book. We, we talk about what the book tells to do or what your instructor tells you to do. But sometimes there's more to it than that. And, and sometimes we don't have the time to go that in depth. But you got to use common sense. You can't just make a direct ascent from 100 feet. Uh, of course, you need to do it slower than a foot a second we prefer a foot every two seconds if not slower uh, do your your stops if you're obligated to do a stop whether it's a deco or a, a deep stop or even a safety stop and the only time that you should really stray away from that is in the event that you are going to run out of air and you have to make that direct ascent then you then it's okay to to eliminate those stops but in this particular situation I, there was no need to actually eliminate it once again we both felt comfortable being alone and so, uh, and then of course here I'm, I'm finishing up my safety stop and I'm headed back up to the surface. You're actually seeing it from the other camera's angle uh, or other view now. So, but just be careful out there, guys. Remember your basic skills from your open water class. Uh, you know, slow, safe ascents are always the best. Always do a safety stop regardless of what dive you're on, unless you run the uh, unlikelihood of end of running out of air. And just be safe out there. Discuss your dives beforehand, you and your buddy, you know, whether it's a lost buddy procedure or whether it's uh, an entanglement situation or whatever the problem may be. And, of course, stop, think, and act. Stop. Anytime you have a problem, stop everything you're doing. Take a, a few breathing cycles. Then think about what caused that problem, how to fix that problem, and then take another couple breathing cycles and then act accordingly and then of course always breathe no matter what breathe before the problem during the problem and after the problem. so but guys you know i do appreciate you watching this video i really hope you learned something from it but uh just wanted to show you what a, a lost buddy procedure from you know close to 100 foot would look like so guys as you can see in the video uh i took my time i relaxed 
I, I kept looking for my buddy throughout the entire ascent process. I did a deep stop. I did a safety stop just for my safety as well. Uh, one thing that I, I kept my calm about, I knew that I had a redundant air source. I knew that my buddy had a redundant air source. We both felt comfortable diving together and we both kind of felt comfortable diving uh, in a lost buddy procedure, or even a solo diving type scenario. So guys, anytime you lose your buddy, it's not something that you need to immediately panic on, but it is something you need to take care of. And how do we take care of problems underwater? You simply stop everything you're doing, think about the problem, what's causing it and how to fix it, and then course act upon it so guys i really appreciate you watching this video if you got any comments or concerns please put it down in the comment section below we'll try to get to you as quickly as we can as always make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like us on facebook pin us on pinterest subscribe to us here on youtube and as always guys we appreciate your business